Here. Trusty Ivan? Here. Trusty Killily? Here. Trusty Christ? Here. Mayor LaRue? Here. You have the quorum. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll get started with the meeting. We have, uh, we're fortunate to have a presentation here tonight from the Beacon Water Meter Software presentation from Midwest Meters. I forgot your name already. Yes, sure, Tim O'Connor. Tim. Tim is here. Great. He's going to uh, give us a riveting presentation on Badger, Badger Meters. Badger Meters, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm supposed to speak in the phone on Facebook. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. My, my name is Tim O'Connor. I'm with Midwest Meter. We're the... Uh, a distributor for Badger Meters. Um, we've been a supplier of meters here in the village for oh, as far as I can remember, 20, 30 years. Um, so I'm here tonight I'm going to give you a brief presentation um, on the new uh, meter reading software and just kind of go over um, some of the benefits um, for the village and for the residents, uh, as importantly. Um, the current software has been in use for more than 10 years, and Badger has um, officially notified all of its customers of the official end of support as the early part of this year, uh, necessitating the need for the, um, the upgrade to the newer uh, Beacon software. So the, the big difference is, there's a few differences, is the, uh, the new software is a hosted software. It's a cloud-based software, so it will allow um, uh, updates daily. A lot, every day when you sign on, go to use the system, you have the latest software, and so that's part of the of the package. Um, it'll allow uh, village personnel, as you de decide who gets access when, access to the, the meter rating system, water usage, and accounts um, from anywhere where there's internet connection, iPhone, at home, um, at the village, what have you. Um, so I'll, I'll cover just some of the highlights here in a brief presentation. Um, if any time anybody has any questions, please stop me. Um, so what it, this is a um, this is a, a, a dummy version. It's a it's a dummy set of information um, from a utility um, that they set up, just showing alerts and alarms. And um, so there's, this is a real time data. But the the first page here is just a it's the the desktop page. So every time you open it up, this information will be available, and then. For each user, this is customizable. There's the different quadrants here you'll see. Um, so you can move these around, top accounts and what have you. But the, I'll start here to the left, and, and this just does a, a daily monitoring of the accounts. So in this particular uh, utility, there are 428 leaks, possible leaks detected. Um, possible, or 190 uh, accounts with no recent flow. Backflow, if there is backflow, and continuous flow. Um, out of all the, the service accounts, um, this is just showing that you know 3,072 reported okay, and on 58th, on this particular day, there were reporting issues. Uh, as I said, th this is done in the weekly usage for the whole system. You know, so summertime, wintertime, was it up from the previous week or 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 down? Um, and then this also. Um, 
So here's a, t a tap accounts page. So favorites and then tap accounts by usage. So what's a, I said this is customizable. So maybe for Joe, he'd want to come in and sign on every day and take a look at the top users in the village, the top 10 users, um, maybe for the support staff, uh, if there's a customer that doesn't think they're using that much water or um, they want to keep an eye on their water usage, um, you can move these accounts, um, but it just gives you that ability to do that. Everywhere you see that there is uh, an arrow, you can drill down and get more information. So we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the leaks detected here. Hopefully. <laughs> Okay, no problem there. Okay, we're having some technical difficulties here. <laughs> My apologies. We'll keep trying. Um, I'll move on with one of the big um, benefits of the Badger system, the, the Beacon system, is a consumer ion water portal. So as part of the upgrade, uh, the village will be able to allow the customers to monitor their own water usage. Um, so I'll have an iPhone app, um, and we'll talk about as the upgrade moves forward with Joe and Kristen and, and the, the people in Public Works as to how we want to roll this out. You probably don't want to roll it out to all residents at one time. You probably want to do it by you know a couple hundred accounts per month or what have you, but it allows the residents all, most of the, not in this format, but most of the information as to um, how much water they use, used on an hourly basis, um, a weekly basis, monthly basis. Um, oh, here we go. Um, and it also allows customers to set alerts and alarms for themselves. So they can go in, and I'll show you here in just a second, how they can set up if they have a continuous flow of running water for 24 hours, they can set the system up to send them a text message or an email saying, hey, you know, you, you've had continuous water flow in the house for 24 hours. So if you're on vacation or just not, you just maybe your kids or somebody left the, the hose on, the garden hose, you had no idea. So right now, if you're billing bi-monthly, quarterly, you know, you may not know for a long time until you get your water bill, and you get this huge water bill. So well, I couldn't use that much water. Well, you know, so this way, it's, it's a very proactive approach. <clears throat> so here's, here's one of the accounts. So these are the possible leaks detected. So we'll click on one of these just to show. So this is a possible leak detected, uh, 681 gallons. We're going to hide the other meters, hopefully. Um, and it will give us a, a Google Earth view. But as you see here, this just tells you that the leak's detected. Okay. We got a slight delay. So this goes in. We're just going to click in on this account here. And as I said, it gives you a Google Maps view as to that account. It'll actually show you where on the property the water meter is. And then when you come down here, it allows you to take a look at the leak detected and then the usage um, up or down from the previous week. Um, and this is where the utility, and I'll show you here in just a minute how the customer would set the same type of a leak. but. Um, these are the four steps you go through. So most customers have intermittent flow. And then you move on and said the customer can customize this set and alert when let's say uh, there's continuous flow that exceeds 10 gallons per minute. Okay. You go to the next page, they add in their email address or if they want it sent to them by text. And then every day, every two days, every three days, what have you. And then you would save it. Yeah. If there's an email associated with a particular account, can this be set up to generate an email to them? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Yep, sure can. Without them doing it, like the village people out there? Yes. Yeah. So this, this is actually the village portion of it. Yeah. So you could set an alert for all those, or uh, maybe it's a, an apartment building owner that owns multiple properties in the village or something like that. Yes. And you can set that up. When we're back at the at the at a glance page here, you know, this is what we're talking about too, these favorites. So 
whoever it is, if it's a, a, someone in the field wants to monitor an account for a, for a specific customer or customers that call in and said, geez, could you keep an eye on this for me? This is where you can set that all up. So, um, and you can set the parameters that the, you, you and Kristen and whoever would, would set up those parameters, who gets the emails when and, and those types of things. Yeah, that's another thing. Does our meter tech signal out there to the repairs? They got a question on the account. They have to call back. You know, Kristen go into the, you know, the system, find out what they're using, you know, generate a report, put back to the guys that have this on the iPad or the phone. They can do it right on the account. Yeah, right on site with the customer. So. So any, when, they, when you're looking at these, at the, the accounts, the, when, when the, the public works folks are, anything with the blue dot is somebody who signed up for this, this Iron Water consumer portal. So let me just open this up here. And this is the information that the customer sees. Okay, this is all the meter information down here to this side. Um, this is their usage. Okay. And then this once again, well, here's, here's their information and we're talking about them being able to see or <coughs> the utility staff being out with them on site, being able to see. So there's the daily information for December. So December 16th of 2018, there's the hourly information. Um, and from the village, so this is what the customer sees. This is what they can pull up on their cell phone or access anywhere they have internet. Um, and this is also what, you know, if you're on the phone with a customer calling in, you can pull this information up, create a PDF, email it to them or, or what have you. And, and the guys on site can pull up the same information. And I'll show you one more thing here, analytics. So to be proactive in terms of managing the system and monitoring leaks, um, and if the customers are doing anything about it, you notify the customer and you notify them again. And at some point you got to make a decision. Do we threaten to turn off the water or what options can we give them? This gives you this page here, the analytics page can tell you, um, you know, how many of the, the uh, let's go back up here. So they, you can monitor the leaks, how long there's a, a portion of this will show you is it, is the leak, how strong is the leak? It's been going on for, you know, zero to one week, two to three weeks, what have you, to see how long, how many leaks you have in the system that have not been addressed. And then in terms of managing who has the eye on water, the customer is I So once you have the, the, uh, the system and you're running, you probably don't want to roll it out to all the residents at once because there's going to be phone calls and, and a lot of um, questions. Um, so you probably want to figure out a couple hundred accounts a month and, and roll that out. And then you want to see, well, how many folks are using iron water and then from your standpoint what can you expect is always a question I get so typically between five and twenty percent after about six months to a year of having this beacon usually five to twenty percent of the customers will be actively using this ion water and over time that's just going to increase and increase because as we all know the cost of water keeps going up and it's if you don't know it already I got news for you it's going to continue to go up on a yearly basis so um, the more and people say, well, how come some towns they use it a lot and some towns they don't? A lot of it will depend on the village standpoint, how much you put this in, you advertise the function, the feature. Um, you know, as they call in, you'll be letting people know they have access to this information. Over time, it'll reduce the number of calls and people will monitor their usage more and it'll be more efficient for them. Um, but if you put it in the village newsletter and on the website and, you know, over time, more and more people will show up, will sign up, excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. Did you say that um, the residents can can they use sign this um, sign up for this on their iPhone as well as an Android phone? Yeah. Both phones. Yes. Yep. Yep. Does it also give the projected dollar amount, or just the usage? Just the usage, the gallons. Yeah. So it's, it's a very powerful software, um, but over time you'll see it's very proactive in helping from a management side, managing the water system, knowing where the water is going, you know, your, your amount billed versus what you guys are purchasing. All, all those things can be calculated and, and proactively, you know, letting people know by text and email customers, you know, as a customer service, hey, you know, you've got water running. After, so like I said, it doesn't go 60 or 90 days before they realize it. You know, hopefully within 24, 48 hour period, they'll be aware of that. So. 
Um, but we'll handle everything from the Midwest Meter Badger side. Uh, once the order is placed, we'll do the, um, the final interface with the billing vendor. And uh, to Joe and Kristen, it'll be seamless. We'll come on site, do the training, train the staff. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty neat, pretty exciting software. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. That's correct. Yes. Yep. Yep. It's a link, and then they'll go to the website and sign up, and, and you control who gets access. Big, big point there. So within within the city, the village, who gets access, and which customers. And so, as I mentioned, we'll we'll go through that with you. How you want to roll that out and have a game plan, so you're not just swamped with you know 20 phone calls on one day or something. How long is the actual transition for um, this software into Locus, which is our billing software? Yeah, the, the whole process once the order is placed is about uh, probably about three to four months. So that with the new with the Beacon software, they have to create a new interface file, and, and Badger and Midwest Meter handles all that with Locus. Okay. So probably uh, three to four months, and uh, then we'll switch it over and be ready to go live. We'll come on site and do all the training and. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm not sure if your software even will affect it. What if the leak is on the village side? Is that something that your software will also be able to aid the village in being able to recognize, or is that something? It's only when it goes through the meter. So it's only for the consumer yeah. itself, and then everything else is built through. We just got a lead survey ourselves. Yes. This is only detecting what goes through that meter. Transmits the signal and gas going through. It's on the other side of the meter. Uh, okay. So we we hire. Thank you. Yes, sir. Can the village and the customers see the same screen at the same time? Is this a question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Two people are in the same screen? No, exactly. No, in fact, that's what they'll be doing is when a customer calls in, they'll submit, you may even direct them to it. And here's how you can sign up for the Iron, Port Iron Water Portal, and you can pull it up here, and you'll be looking at the same thing, yes. So, the, um, this does. This is just one portion of it to the our our water usage community. Those people will will be able to access that, and our technicians will be able to access it on site. But this is also an update to our current software because we're behind in our current software, right? Yes, that's correct. How, how far behind are we in our current software? Um. <laughs> years, decades. Yeah, months? years, years. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. So either way, we need to at least purchase the software to update our meter reading to Locus at the very least, right? Yeah. Yeah. You need. You need to. Yeah. You, you'll need to. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. This. This is one of those. Uh, well, it's for three or four years. Beacons, but out. You're not. You're not the guinea pig. And we've been telling customers for three or four years. And then <coughs> you get to the point where Badger finally says, "Okay, we're officially not going to support it." So if something happens. You know, you're 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 on your own. So, um, but that being said, we have older softwares that have we've said that, and we continue <laughs> to service it. So it goes on and on. So, but this is this is this is the end. So that's why we're here. Okay. Anything? Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Wonderful. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. And you guys all have. Joe's got my card. In fact, if anybody's got any questions afterwards, feel free to give me a call. Sounds good. <laughs> Anything else, Joe? Uh, none of that. Okay. So, can I ask a quick, quick question? <laughs> so, this is not new software to the village. We are the village already has Badger meter reading software. This is just a, called Read Center, yes, that we currently use right now is called Read Center. Read Center. And so that software is outdated and we need to update yeah. it. Yes. So this is the newest version of that software, but it also in includes the customer component. Well, that's an add-on. Yeah. Oh, that's an add-on. But it's offered. Oh, that's an add-on. Okay. Okay. Is this for residents and businesses or just residents? Hey, Joe. Can I get one of these two? <coughs> he was <laughs> busy on his phone, yeah. You weren't sitting with your seat. Okay.
All right. Uh, we'll move on to public comment. If I'll open the floor to public comment. If you'd like to be made a matter of public record, please stand and state your name and address. See, there's no public comment. Close the floor to public comment and move on to trustee business. Trustee Chris. A couple uh, updates this evening. Um, tomorrow is our Keep Midlothian Beautiful meeting at noon, uh, and we will have Karen Rosmus from Keep Illinois Beautiful and Sue Smith, who's a national trainer. So for those of you who can attend, I think it would be well worth your time to learn again from the experts. They're going to do additional training. We have a full agenda. Uh, we're going to start talking, hopefully, about uh, Great American Cleanup, which will replace Cleanup Day. We're going to hopefully replace Cleanup Day this year and actually make it uh, more productive in more than one day. So that's tomorrow at noon. Uh, Stormwater Management Capital Plan meeting will be uh, on Wednesday, January 23rd at 10 a.m. And again, this is th through the, the grant through Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning and they hired Strand and Associates. And for those of you who were at the last meeting, I think you can all agree Strand and Associates are doing an incredible job. Don, we, you were there. With, with the things that they are identifying. So again, everyone's invited. Um, I did attend last Thursday the CalSeg Enterprise Zone meeting, and they are actually working on marketing tools as well for um, <coughs> properties in the CalSeg Enterprise Zone. So stay tuned. There's a brochure. <coughs> They're working on sheets for available properties, and I believe that is all I have this evening. Thank you, Ed. Trustee Ivan. Um, all I have to talk about is the <coughs> drop payment uh, box. Uh, anybody have any questions? I guess my question would be, when would it be installed? When would it go into effect? When weather's permitting. Um, we'll probably uh, sister it up with the, uh, the food pantry thing that we were talking about. Yes. <clears throat> so. Probably do the concrete they would work for that as well as for the drop box at the same time. And once we order it, about how long does it take for it to be delivered? Four to six weeks. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure if it was something that would come like in a couple days or if. No, we're not, not going to use Amazon Prime to get it. Okay. I, I just didn't know how long it would take, so. <coughs> Any other questions about it? All right. Um, <coughs> since I got, it says approval on there, and we did talk about it last week, can I make the uh, motion to approve the purchase the payment tax? You may. Is there a second? The, I'll second. Is there any discussion now? Seeing there's no discussion, roll call, please. Trustee Ivan. Aye. Trustee Kamey. Aye. Trustee Crowley. Aye. Trustee Gillis. Aye. Trustee Kelly. Aye. Trustee Christ. Aye. Motion carries. Well, thank you. That ends my business. Thank you, sir. Trustee Gillis. I have nothing to see, sir. Well, we're flying. <laughs> and, now it, and now it comes to a dead stop. <laughs> <laughs> a screaming <laughs> dead stop. <laughs> dead stop. <laughs> screaming dead stop. Trustee okay. Cavity. Thank you, Mayor. First thing on my list is that um, the superintendent, the two NICs, the superintendent and our attorney, got together yesterday or the day before and worked on the plumbing ordinance for adoption and hopefully attorney Valdez will have the draft ready to roll and on our agenda for next week for approval so um, deputy clerk if you could add to the agenda next week <coughs> a line item for approving the new plumbing ordinance or adapting the new plumbing ordinance excuse me um, Next item, I'm going to turn this over to Superintendent Weinert. He is going to discuss with us the current zoning and proposed changes to our zoning map. Okay. Um, I have copies here from one of the complaints that they were too small. So I have copies of all the zoning maps. I have the 2009 map that we had last, and then it's got all. 400 plus updates for all the pins that were changed. That's the next map. The third map in this roll is 
the 2019 map showing all the highlights that were done. And the final map is the 2019 zoning map that would need to be adopted at the next board meeting. All right, because the zoning map is supposed to be adopted every year by August, by March 31st. If you want, I can pass out copies of this now. You can look through it if you have any questions. What you'll see on here too, because it's hard to see what you have there, is all the changes were actually circled. And you'll notice that some pin numbers were missed in some areas. It's hard to see in those maps, but it's easy to see on these. What, what is circled? Well, what which happens, one? What happens is, the first page of the map you see on the website, right? This one? Mm -hmm. This is the first map. <coughs> the one that says 2009, this is on the website. Mm -hmm. This is what you see, right? That's the current map. The 2009 map, see all the squares that have been circled here in brown? All these different brown and colored black circles, rings around it. Like right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, Is there okay. any other one that has one, like over here? It's on the 2019 highlighted? No, 2009. 2009. It says draft on it. Colors are horrible. <coughs> so that's why we put it back to the original map for the colors. Yeah. Okay? Because the Robinson wanted to change the colors. And I said you can have comparing apples and apples. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's why these are like this. You can write on them. You can use them, whatever you want to do, turn them in if you want them, so that you can see what was changed from 2009 to 2019, all right? The third map in the roll here is actually the 2019 map, color-coded correctly, and everything's still with X's, with the, with the, with the marks around. Mm -hmm. So like the big area that was changed from where you live, from R3 or whatever it was, and then R1, the colors are put back like it was in a 2009 map, so that way you're comparing apples and apples. You can actually see the colors, you can actually see what's going on, okay? The fourth map that we have here in your role is what the actual 2019 zoning map looks like with all the changes. But some of the things that need to be addressed is, I'll just point right my fingers right here, which is hard to see. So I think fingers up there. Huh? Mm -hmm. Anybody quick? So my fingers up here? Mm -hmm. See the spots along where the blue is, where the tracks mm -hmm. are? See the certain parcels that are not the same color? We yeah. the blue. Okay. Those were pin numbers that weren't changed, that were missed. See like up there. So you'll notice in some areas you'll see a, a, a pin up a pin, a lot that doesn't belong here. Primarily like here where the blue is where you miss the lot. Yeah. A certain area. What's so, blue again? Blue that's the IC tracks. Long way from the industrial. Oh. Right? So what happens here is, is that if you look on this map for 2019, you'll see some lots that were missed, maybe missed the uh, pin. Or in case they those need to be addressed and looked at. But now you have a current map with all 400 plus pins that have changed over the last 10 years, and this map is now up to date. And this is what will be on the website, so people can look at it and come back now with the And I have roles here where everyone here is people look at. Okay, that way you know what's going on. Now we got a question. Can you pull up? Uh, on here. Can I just make one comment real quick? I have two things in your desktop. Yes. Um, if you look over on the block of Spring, uh, Springfield between 145th and 144th, <clears throat> to the left side of Springfield Avenue, you'll see where there are two pins that are still not zoned properly. Not zoned properly. Right. I believe that might have been an error when we were trying to capture all the pins for this whole neighborhood. So can we make, uh, how do we correct that? Is it like a, what you call a scrivener's error? Can we this, make an, an amendment to the ordinance to fix that so that before we adopt this new 2019 map, those are included? Well, you need to adopt this map by March 31st. Right. Whether that is just an error 
or a pen that was missed. It, the issue would come down to whether notice was provided to the, to the landlord somehow. Do you want the 78 PDF first? So, well, if um, you remember, we we attempted to send notices. We weren't required to, but we sent letters to all the homeowners over there. So I don't know if we have a master list or a photocopy of all the letters that we sent or if we have a master list of the addresses that were sent to, but we can certainly reach out to these two homeowners. Right. If, if notice was provided, then as the superintendent's stated that it would be considered a scrivener's error that it was just a well we we will need to reach out to these people but what about also those, those aren't actually homes those what are, are they those are lots behind the homes the one you're talking about these two brown ones there right yeah yeah the homes are on springfield and they just have deep lots they're deep lots i think they're two pins there's oh. no home well and I, i've been out here long okay Unless someone sold those and built homes on them. Okay. We'll just have to look at the bigger version of the map and reach out and double check and reach out to those folks. It's the same way, a long way. We're going to be missing a couple of laps there also. Uh -huh. So that'll be needed to look at going through for dependents, okay? Mm -hmm. And on one of the questions we had from a previous, from a resident that was here at the last meeting, he was saying that his old map, right. his property was residential, but it was own business. What I did here is I found two old zoning maps. <coughs> I found two zo old zoning maps. Mm -hmm. If you can roll this area up right here, put 125% of this area. You can go on. Maybe that's slow over. Mm -hmm. Scroll down. Keep on going all the way. Okay. You get push glasses. <laughs> okay, so they're right there at table right there. But you're going by. So scroll over to your right, please. Okay. A little more. Okay, so see the dates on here? Scroll down a little bit. The dates on here, see these zone changes were from 1967 to 1978. So when somebody comes up and says, well, why are we zone business? If you were to take this map, go all the way to the right to Kedzie, one of the properties is on Kedzie, remember he was in here? Okay, so go all the way to the far right, go to Kedzie, go north of 147th Street. I'll go up. Keep on going. Okay, stop right now. Okay, so if you look, you see how all the way to the far right, it's modeled looking, Yes. right? Okay, if you were to look at the table, those homes on that side of Kedzie, on that Kedzie property were zoned for business before. They were the, yeah. And that's from 19, whatever dates it was. And then the following map after that I got goes, I think, to 91. And it shows that it was still zoned business. That's the other one in there, PDF that's up there. And I can email this to you if you like, if you want to compare what was years ago. So if a resident comes up and says, well, you know, I, was, I wasn't zoned residential before, I was zoned business or vice versa, you know when you can go all the way back to the, what was 67, whatever date it was, and you can see what it was at that time frame to the next time frame. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those, those residents were built, you know, <coughs> it was zoned business. Well, on the business though, it says business including taverns, business excluding taverns. <laughs> but for back in the 60s when they zoned stuff, those homes the table. were probably built. I'm no idea. Sevens? <coughs> no, they're built in the 60s. Before it. They were in the 60s. Yeah, I owned two of them at one time. 146, 16, 146, 12. But from day one, they were zoned. Business. They were zoned business, and they should have never been built, anyways. Okay, so that's. I'm sure they got special use for various. <laughs> sure. Okay, so that was one of the people on your bookmarks. There's one that says Cook County Jewelry. Go to the left. Go to the left. So it says Cook County Jewelry. This is another site that you can use if you want to find out pin numbers and look stuff up. So scroll down a little bit, Carol. See on the very bottom, not far enough. It says 10 bit stop, Carol. Where it says, wherever you're at, type in. Select address, you can go pin address intersection, pick address. 
Then go and put a 140 at 01 Southwest. And just select. Scroll down. Sorry. Say accept. It just says you want to get used to something. So what happens here is, is you just have this. doesn't seem like it does much for you. So the second thing on the right here says satellite review. Would you click that? Yeah, click that. Okay, so there's the village. All right. And how the kiss came up was that in ordinance 1858, I think, we had a question with the pin number of the pins, right? What was the pin was what? If you could scroll down a little bit, not bigger, just scroll down. No, you just gotta kind of drag it. What else? Go the other way. Uh, <laughs> keep on going. Oh, keep on going. I want you to. I want you to go over to Title Max. Is it a car dealer? Is it? Right there. Okay, stop right there. All right. So what ended up happening here? We had a problem with a pin, and we didn't know. So what ended up happening is. I looked at this car dealer. Can you see the mouse on there? If you move the mouse around? Yeah. Okay. All right. Here, let me do this. Okay, so what happened here is, you see where the mouse is right now? Yeah. Okay. That right there is an alley. And that alley goes up the way this mouse is going. Okay. All right. Now all the way up. All right. So that mouse is going up, so that's an alley that wasn't vacated. And the car dealer's using it. So the car dealer, in that situation, probably should have a pen and then paying taxes on the property since you're using it. So is it McDonald's too using it? And well McDonald's, yeah, but McDonald's also shows that they're using half the alley. But what happens there is the property line is not all the way over onto that. So it's like they're using the alley for Nothing, I don't know if it was ever recorded that way, if it was ever completed, if they just vacated part of it and didn't continue the process all the way to the end. I don't know that. It just came, it came apparent to me, going to the zoning map, looking at, we don't have a PIN number for that property. It was an error, it was recorded wrong, so I went on here to try to find it. That's what I found. The next thing I found, too, was, I don't know why this is doing this. Of course, it's right where I want to look. Let's see what I don't know. All right, so over here, on the next block up on east, the school that's built there is actually built across the alley. And they showed two creek lines going right through the middle where the alley is. So was that ever taken care of? If you go on this map and you look around, you will see where people have built an alley. Was the other alley or property vacated or not? I don't know. If you go over here, I'm just going to do three things I found. I believe it's this property right here. Okay, so this block here between, what is it, Keystone and Carla? Okay. So if you look here, what you actually see is if you scroll down, whoever built these apartments, the line is right down the middle where the alley was. Up here, there's a small, narrow figure with that vertical pin. Somebody assigned a pin to the alley that wasn't vacant. So at least then that apartment complex that ever took care of all, where we want to put it. But the bottom properties, if you go this way a little bit, <coughs> they stop. This green line, see how these properties, once this catches up right now, this is one property, that's another property. But if you go back up, you got a vertical pin, because right here, this is where the mouse is, right there. Is now the alley that was not vacated, but well, became a pin that these apartments are paying tax on. 
maybe the same person built them all at the same time, I don't know. But if you go through the village, you'll find out whoever has alleys, a lot of the alleys don't seem like they were properly vacated, and then people are going on them or using them. Some are, some are. But in that no man's land, what happens if we have any kind of legal issues or something so, happens on the property? So that's an alley inside the parking lot that's there. Right, so this was originally the alley going down, but it looks like it was never vacated, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word or not. But here's a pin, here's a pin. So instead of combining them together like they did here, they assigned a pin number to the alley. Something like that. That's just right here in the middle, which doesn't make sense to me. <coughs> and I, I'm out of my wheelhouse here talking about vacating alleys and everything. Building guy. I just found this out doing the zoning. So I thought I'd bring it to the board's attention to see what they have to do. If, like the mayor said, let's vacate alleys that we don't use. What we need to do here to vacate the alley. So if a person, if you vacate the alley, the person on each side of the alley gets that property in the middle. So their lot would grow by what, eight feet or 10 feet half of the alley width. Can we force property owners to take ownership of that property if we want to vacate it? Huh? Why wouldn't they want to? Are we, are we legally responsible for that pin number that's defined in the alley? No, I think that right there is probably that person there who went to the honest uh, assessor's office who find out was paying taxes on it, right? So, so it's probably the apartment complex. It's not that. It's the issue where you went over where the car dealer is. That alley is now paved and fenced, and the car dealer is using it. In my opinion, shouldn't the car dealer be paying taxes on property he's using? Well, the only concern I would have is that, that is the Cook County viewer may not be um, survey accurate in that when you're talking about spaces and distances of feet from this perspective and through the <coughs> tool, there is a possibility that it will not reflect what the actual legal status or boundaries are. It, it may not, but it seems like I would expect that to be in a few places. I would expect it to be block after block after block. To a, to a certain degree, the only way you would be able to determine would be to have a survey done. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't find any information on any alley in the village being vacated? Well, I didn't really, we didn't really go through because we don't know whenever it was done, if it was ever done. What do they know that some have been vacated? For the one, the, the, the survey, the copy of the survey that we had with the zoning variance application for CARS 147 actually showed that the alley was vacated behind it. Okay, so on our end it was vacated, has that been continued all the way to yeah, that I don't know. That's the only one instance I'm referring to. That because it was in the file when we were looking at the that's when we uncovered it, you uncovered it, but the wrong so, so the alley in cars 147 has been vacated and they own it. And Based on the hard copy of the survey I have, it says okay. vacated alley. But okay. I, so if that's all we found. Sorry. If it's a vacated alley, why does that depend? It does or does not. It does not. Maybe it's. But this alley has it. Well, maybe, may, I'm just assuming that maybe that if, it, if the alley was vacated, maybe the pin that was associated with the, with the car dealer itself, maybe that pin property got expanded to include the alley. Sure. But I'm looking at the alley going north and south, and it's right the, the apartments there on Harding have taken over those alleys. The two residents have taken over the alleys. McDonald's. Thank you. So. I can't see. Well, don't look at little maps. I straight around kind of as far as the color scheme or anything like that. But that's what we have going on here. And I just wanted to bring the board's attention to they want to address people using actually we're actually using the public way. And board, please keep in mind, the village is required to adopt the zoning map every year by March 31st. Okay. So, so this is something that has to occur every year. And to the best of my knowledge, it's never occurred. As long as I've been coming to these meetings. State law. State law. I have written down the final statute. So it's supposed to be done every year by the 31st. 
So the 2019 Kansas State draft guide should be placed on the agenda, and then the village board should adopt that, and then we should put that on the website, or else we have to I'm going to show you all the zoning changes so that you know of all the stuff that was done since 2009 in the last year. And if anybody has any questions, I have, I have one question. Yeah. How does what the village vacates or not vacate or adopts or not adopts, how does that get to the county? Well, it's <clears> not, <throat> that's not on my wheel. Yeah. And this is how this happened. This is not uncommon. Um, you can have private owners who uh, have contracts to sell real estate, and they will have a legal description, and they will have a survey. The legal description will determine what was contemplated in the sale of the property. As you know, being experienced board members, uh, that when the process of vacating the alley goes through, uh, or a purchase of village-owned property, sometimes property that the village acquired through another means, you have this continual private uh, interest between parties and contracts, selling and buying, and then you have private government interaction with municipalities both selling, buying, and vacating. Bottom line is that all of these things um, have to come together ideally with these PIN numbers being created by the county once these documents have been recorded. Now sometimes, in fact quite common, people will exchange contractual obligations and purchase property and they won't record it or they won't get a pin number if a new pin number is if, if the track is recreated in a different um, formation than it was prior to so you would have a new pin number so the, the recorder county everyone who's trying to keep track of who owns property in Cook County um, can only do that if the parties report it and report it accurately so my guess would be that in a lot of these situations having occurred so long ago, that these properties probably were vacated, um, but they didn't have this device back in those days. The requirements for PIN numbers may have been different. The law may have been different in those days. And you end up in a situation in which unless the, uh, the village is meticulously recording what it's done <laughs> and describing it legally with surveys, that reality can get lost. Uh, we have a current example right now with regard to the, uh, the water tower where we sold to uh, Ricky Rockets. And currently right now, the drive count time. to yeah. drive time, just excuse me, drive time. And drive time, uh, coming across getting the, the water tower lease, there was no pin numbers to reflect that where our tower is was not sold. Now, no one is claiming that we did not sell that particular part and drive time is not saying they own it but as far as the county is concerned they don't know that they don't have geographical or pin numbers to reflect that and so that's why mr murphy at yearly annually the county goes to clean this stuff up and issues the new uh pin numbers for what is taxed and what is tax exempt and that's what we're going through <coughs> the process right now but as you can see if if no one properly applies for uh, verification of the pen or a new pen, then as far as the county knows, it never happened. But in, legally, if there's a contract with a survey that can determine what was conveyed, that's new ownership. Someone else owns it. Doesn't matter what the county says, they own it. So to simplify it in my own mind, could we simply ask the county for all the what they believe are taxes that exempt properties? And compare them to. Actually, we, we do that every year. That. We do that every year. So we would have caught. Well, Maggie has that list. Okay. So we should, we could we would catch that then. If if this if these alleys are saying that they're tax exempt and yet there's a it, building. If out. there's a pin, because the county does everything. But the alleys do not have pins because they're, they're actually public property. But people are using that public property. Because nobody uses the well, alley, so it's typical. In, th in, why, in their theory, theory, they're using it because bottom line is, if they, if that owner from 40 years ago, or whenever this happened, has a legal description that shows that they, that they, uh, they bought it or Midlothian vacated it to them in the conveyance, 
then they own it. It doesn't matter what the county says. I mean, the county will never win by saying, we don't know anything about this. If someone can produce a document that says, I got this from the village of Midlothian by them vacating it with a legal description and a survey. Would our, would our village Sidwell map? Sidwell maps are typically how municipalities make that determination. That's, that's supposed to so be. So if we, if the village started vacating alleys, shouldn't this, when the, when the village went through that process, shouldn't the village have had their Sidwell map updated yes. to show that it's? Yes, absolutely. So should we look at the, could the Sidwell be wrong as well if it never was updated? Because the, Sid, the Sidwell map, went, whenever this alley behind, what's the business cars, 147? Whenever the alley was vacated, the, the Sidwell map should have been updated. Yeah. So yeah. that should show that that alley is gone. And it's sure. not an alley anymore. Yeah. And trustee, I suspect that it's probably, to what the superintendent is saying, it's probably a mixture of all of the above. That some people are using uh, unvacated village property for their own private purposes. And some people, many years ago, uh, took village property by way of vacation or even bought it. But that may not be reflective <coughs> of the Sidwells or the county in terms of pins. Mm -hmm. that, we also have garages that have been built, pools. Mm -hmm. so if you go through a couple of alleys, mm -hmm. you'll see that there's a lot of things that people have been doing in summer to clean. Some Everybody's just migrating into that vacant space. And this would have never been found if we didn't have the pin number error on that one ordinance for cars 147. It's kind of like beer gardens. <laughs> migrate. Um, is, am I reading this properly? Am I looking at this and seeing that our village hall is zoned as open space? I'm looking at the 2019, where it says Fire Station 1. It's the very last map in the row. Huh? Yeah, I'm Don and I are sharing. Sit right here. I mean, this is the Metro lot, so that's fine. It's actually park. I mean, I don't know if it's zoned properly. Do we own the metro lot or does metro own it? We own, me we own the metro no, lot. No, metro. Oh, metro. Metro owns it. Sorry. Okay, if metro owns it, it, shouldn't it be zoned? Shouldn't it be blue? Or a different color? Metro owns it. The metro lot and the whole village complex here is green, which, pursuant to the color key, is open space. So the question that would come up is, is, is a parking lot um, not considered a, by definition open space within the village? No, I say the parking lot is, that's probably correct, but why is the village? Village Hall, Hall is green. Yeah. VFW Hall. That's what it shows on the 2009? 19. No, the, the 19, the last page, or the second, yes, last page. I mean, the railroad the railroad tracks are blue, so shouldn't the metro parking lot be blue? That hasn't been rezoned, so what? it can't be green. What does 2009 say? What is 2009? I bet you that's different. No, it's green. Same. Same. It's green. What does the 1968 one say? <laughs> <laughs> it's, the 1968 one's in black and white. It would have dots or stars or hashtags. Cash marks. I know the uh, comprehensive plan contemplated making that metro line a park. Pardon? The comprehensive plan yes. from 2005, I believe, mm -hmm. contemplated making that park, the metro lot, a park. But not the village hall. The village and then where were we going to put parking if we were going to make that a park? Other side. Where? Other side where? On my side of the tracks. Other side of the tracks. Village you know, hall was supposed to be on my the, side. Uh, the, it was a big push to get rid of that so people would risk their lives going to work. Right. And the fire, as I remember, as, as I remember it, the village hall was going to be the village hall fire station. Right here. Okay. <coughs> the village hall too? Yeah. Yeah, the village okay. hall is here. Rain garden. Yeah. 
the village hall, I thought, eventually was going to be trade. It, the thought was to demolish that and use it as a uh, as a commercial development. But 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 nothing was rezoned back then. It was a plan. There was no right. there were no zoning changes. Well, I don't think so. I will email everybody a copy of the old zoning plan yeah, that showed up there, okay. and then you can compare. Yeah. Just remember that the legend on there is different. It's not E one two three. Yeah. It's residential. It's business. It's whatever. <coughs> you can take that into account when you're looking at, it. and um, you really have to blow it up and look at it because of the little symbols that put in your dots and edges, yeah. circles. Okay, and I will also send you all the link to that Cook County viewer, so you can go in there. Well, some zoning had to change somewhere because the village hall is green. So, I don't know if that happened in 2009 when the rest of this stuff got rezoned and changed. I, I believe it did. That's, at least that's what I vaguely remember happening. The, that point in time. the open space is defined as uh, the purpose of the open space and recreation district is to ensure that continued existence, maintenance, conservation, and protection of publicly and privately owned open space, natural areas, passive and active recreation facilities that serve the village and surrounding region. I think the idea was that because it was all flood zone that they were going to move everything to my side of the tracks, basically where the bank is at, uh -huh. and uh, build the city hall and do all the work there. Over on 147. Yeah. So there's another question I have too because um over between Central Park and Clifton Park, between 144th and the Tollway on the Yeah. That Just little above blue, Waverly? No, the blue spot here that shows it as open industrial, that's still park district property. What? Where the water tower is? Not the water tower, the billboard, billboard. is. Yeah, across from the billboard. Where's the billboard? Where's the bill is the billboard on here? Well, I take Waverly all the way to the village limit. Yeah, where that little yeah. almost triangle is. Yeah. Yeah, that big <coughs> yeah that's, they call it Shipshawani Park. And is it green? Is it open space? It was green in 2009. Well, it still is green. Oh, did we change it on the accident? Oh, it's blue. And every was looked at. The pins. Oh, it's blue and then the lot on the end is. Okay. And then the lot the lot on the end is yellow for residential. <laughs> right. That's from the street. And that's on Clifton Park in Waverly, correct, Jer? Correct. But the yellow part is actually a road. Huh? Okay, well, that's why we're looking at it, to catch the boo-boos before we adopt it. It's physically a road, but it's, it's still lots. Those are still lots over there. Right. With pin numbers. Wait, I gotta make sure I'm looking at the right spot. And the, and the, and the lot is actually zoned. So one, Jerry? Jerry? I'm looking at the 2009 map, yes. and we're Clifton Park dead ends at the north end. Right. On the right side of Clifton <coughs> Park, there would be the. Or, I'm sorry, Central Park. I'm sorry. I'm on Central Park. Right. On the right side of Central Park, on the east side of Central Park, looks like the last one, two, three, four and a half lots, and the 2009 map are green. Is that the little park you're referring to yes. that's owned by the Park District? Yes. Okay, because now on. On um, the 2019 map, okay, the right. on the 2019 map, right, it's three blue and one yellow. No, 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 they're all yellow. They're all yellow. Look on Central Park no. on the east side oh, of okay. Central Park. Right here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking There's about. Three blue ones. I'm not no, talking about those the three blue ones. Yeah. I'm not talking about the three blue ones. You know ones. what? You're right. I'm looking at the wrong spot. It's right. on Central Park. Yeah. Not Clifton Park. So those, 
On the 2009 map, the four lots at the north end of Central Park on the east side are shown as open space here, and that is a park district park? Yes, and the 19 showing R1, and it should be open space. Right, okay. So it still should be green. You have to understand something, that that whole area up there, that was rezoned from R2 single family <coughs> to whatever it was, R5, then back to R2, uh -huh. there's nothing saying that the wrong pin number to put down. Because you'll see some of the lots near like the back half of the lot hasn't been done. You look along Waverly there, you'll see in the blue there's a lot missing. And, you know, there's not gonna be, it's not going to be uncommon to find out that the pin was missed, or maybe they just listed all the pins when they did this, when they adopted it, and they just went along and they changed the part to a different uh, classification. Could be. Right, or it could be that I know that property was donated by people who owned it. It probably was R1, and it was donated to the park. Maybe it was never changed to open space because it was donated property. So well, I gave you all full size, gave you all full size maps, annotate the way on them, and they can put whatever you want on them, right? And then we can go through to so pull out whatever ordinance it was right. for that property. You can verify even though that was already done. And then if it has to be put back to where it was, you now have an accurate 2019 map according to all the 455 <coughs> pins that were done on 19 pages, single site ordinances, you know, hundreds and hundreds of ordinances. So, Jer, I think, I think on the 2009 map, if you're saying that this was park district property, I don't doubt that. It was probably just an error on our part, and we picked up all the lots in here thinking that they were all residential lots. So if this is vacant property and it belongs to the park district, very well could be the 2009 map is correct, and the correction made on the 2019 map is not correct. Um, if we could look at Central at Clifton Park, which is the block to the east, um, where, Cliff, where Waverly dead ends. We've got that little triangle lot with the one rectangular lot. That's where the billboard is, correct? Right. Okay, lot. right. What about the lot behind it? Isn't it all one little piece of lot, one property, or no? There was two pin numbers there, and then the owner combined it to one pin. Then if the owner combined it to one pin, then there shouldn't be a lot on there. It should be one big triangle. Because it looks like there's a that's, triangle and then a lot. That's correct, but that's what the attorney was talking about. The owner of that property uh -huh. went and changed it to one pin. Okay. All right. And that's what you can see if you look on the program up here. Okay. But we never changed it because we didn't know about it. But our ordinance has it down as two separate mm -hmm. pins when it was adopted. When it was adopted, it was two separate pins. In 20, 2009? Whenever that billboard was put in. I don't know when that was. Well, it was 2009. 2009. So that when that was changed from residential to OI, well, uh -huh. okay, it was two pins. The owner went and we found that it was one pin. Okay. Okay, so it's it is this property is now well on the 2009. It's shown as R3. But it is correctly shown as OI now on the 2019, so that's correct. The zoning's correct, yes. however, it's shown as two parcels, but right now it's one. it's one. Okay, what about the three little blue lots across the street on the west side of Clifton Park? On this map. That's it, that's open industrial. Right, but on this, on the 2009 map, they were all um, R5, and now it's back to office industrial. Were they? Do we know what's on those properties? Business. That is a business there? Yes. So the fact that they're listed as blue is correct on the 2019? Yes. As far as you know? Perfect. Okay. <coughs> well, we need to make this map reflect the park district property in green. 
Are you making notes, Kathy? Yes, I am. So, go to Golf Court. I don't know where that is. Over in my neck of the woods by the country club. Is it north or south of 147? It is going to south. be south. south. The first parcel there. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't find it yet. The first parcel is R1 and all the surrounding ones are R2. Yeah, that doesn't well, make that, that might not be. That's what it comes out to when they get whoever did it. But that's all, it's all R2 over there. And see what it is in fact done. It could have been when an error when they Are you talking about that one lot that's our one? Yeah. On the corner, yeah. yeah. Well if you there's other areas in there, there's still those little lots where the mayor is where that R five areas. There's little lots there are two little lots that are also still left as R five. Right, we have to fix those too. So R2 is the properties in town with bigger lots, correct? That's the 12,000 square foot lot, and R1 goes up to 6,500 square feet. Is that the delineation? No, R1 is bigger. R1 is the bigger lots. R1 are the bigger lots. So you're saying that this whole neighborhood over by Golf Court and down Laverne should be R2 and not R1? I mean, should be R1 and not R2? No. It should be R2. Should be R2, that corner lot yeah, is. The corner lot is R1. It shouldn't be. This one, right this one here. Right. You're saying that should be R1? No, I'm I mean R2. It be R2. I know that we went. Why would it be different? Yeah, why would it be yeah. different than everything else? You know what, Karen? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe somebody changed the ordinance. I don't this know. This is something that Robinson Engineering came up with, right? Well, our Robinson Engineering got all the ordinances. Yeah, I there was an ordinance. ordinance. It got changed because there was an ordinance. And the guy went through every PIN number, and all the discrepancies came back to me. Okay. I looked up all the discrepancies for PIN numbers that didn't exist, or this doesn't match, whatever. And I went through those PIN numbers and found out the correct PINs or the correct address. Or, and then we went back and forth a few times, and that's the final based on all the corrections we found. Can we uh, have some time to look at these maps and then send you guys the description? No, Carl, it has to be done right now. Oh, I was getting that impression, so I just yeah. thought I'd <laughs> correct it. Okay, if, if I could just point out one map that might be easier for all of us to look at. Like you said, this, this is the second map in the pile. Oops. This was the second map in the pile, I'm sorry, which is the 2009 map. And every correction that's made has a little, it's, it's highlighted. Yeah, there's a little box. So you can see, you can see down here, golf court. That's that, the, the lot that Karen just mm -hmm. pointed out. It's got a circle around it. Not a circle, but it's highlighted. So that, this map might be easier for us to look at, to figure out. What got changed and what didn't get changed. So who should I uh, send the discrepancies to? Nick. That guy right there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so as you guys are looking, if you see discrepancies or you have questions, send it all to Nick. He's the man. I'm not going to find this. Safe to say that I think you can take a squish flash pool off. <laughs> so the school <coughs> looks to be the same as the residential except for Springfield School. A lot of schools and churches are zoned like the residential area. So if it's the, the schools are in R1, it's in R1, it's in R2, it's in R2. They don't differentiate and say that's a school zoning. Person. Well, look at look at Springfield School, which is R3, R3, R3 unlike anything else around it. But when the, when everything else gets changed, Sandy, like look at the 2019. It should get changed. That is the 19. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. See. Well, we can change that too. I mean, I mean, I'll take responsibility for any of the errors that are currently sitting on this draft of the 2019. This is, you know, this zoning map modification is my first rodeo. Right. Zoning card. Yeah. 
So. I'm, I'm done. I, I, I still, oh, I beg to differ. I, I <laughs> Is there anything else you can go to No, sir. Okay, I just again want to stress to everybody that we have to have this map adopted by March 31st. So we need to have all the corrections done. Um, I would say by the end of February, so that Robinson can make all their final revisions and give us a final draft for our first committee meeting in March so we can review it. And then if we still have any little nits here and there that need to be fixed, we have time to do it so we're not pressed by the end of March to get this done properly and get this adapted. Okay? Um, and I believe that's all I have, unless I have questions later on. That's quite enough. <laughs> He reserves the right to. That's right. I reserve my right to, to interrupt. Okay, I'll try to make this as fast as I can. Um, but while I'm talking, I'm going to pass out a copy of our uh, newsletter and a copy of ALSA's newsletter. I only have one copy, so you, while, we're, while I'm talking, can look at it and see if there's any differences between the two that you see uh, that you might want to talk about or incorporate or whatever you want to say. So first thing we want to talk about is uh, the discussion about promoting Andy Benarchik to what I call supervisor. And basically, that's to take Ty Swanson out of the rotation. Ty, if he's called out at night, he you know, gets time off, of course, to sleep. And so he's not available during the day. So he's too valuable to be uh, out during the day. They need him. We need him. Uh, so uh, Andy Bernardchik, as we all know, is very competent to do this. And, um, you know, Ty may be called out once in a while to, you know, be the uh, uh, resource for, you know, if they're stumped. But he won't be on there all the time. And right now he's getting called out a lot because either it's his rotation or it's because the on-call team uh, needs a little uh, technical help. So. Um, Joe Sperry wants to uh, make sure that Ty is available much more during the day because he's very valuable. Um, second thing, of course, is that uh, we just talked about the Beacon uh, software, and uh, that will come up uh, next next week also, as Andy Benarchik will. And uh, the I and I uh, process, we need to. Uh, work on our first area that is 10% uh, of the village. And uh, we don't have enough money to do all the work that we're supposed to do. But uh, we do have uh, $133,000 left in the budget. And uh, we can uh, do the home inspections, die tests. And uh, $87,000 can be all allocated for manhole <coughs> rehabilitation work. So that we want to. Uh, we have this on the next uh, on the next week's agenda to uh, approve for approval to take bids for the manhole rehabilitation work. Um, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Uh, I, I have one question. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, on the uh, Beacon software, um, is that budgeted for? Yes. Well, is the upgrade is budgeted for, but I don't believe the new software. Interfaces. Though. How can we budget for the upgrade? Joe Sperry told software? me that the whole thing's budget. So is this seventeen thousand dollars for the for the purchase of the software upgrade plus the add-on? Yes. Plus yes, everything. Okay, so this is training. For, you know, for it, everything. It, yeah, it's got to do the whole thing. It's for the base software upgrade plus the add-on, and the add-on is the residential piece, right. not the residential piece, but the the ion the, water. Ion the water ion water. water. Right. Okay. Twenty-seven fifty for the first year. Well, can we just check with Joe then? Uh, make sure he's, he does have the eye on water piece budgeted, because I thought it was above the budget for that. At least that was my I'll understanding. Double check. I, I His memo says this cost has been included in our full year nineteen yeah. budget. Yeah. His memo says that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well then, I withdraw my question. It's budgeted. Okay. Uh, 
Trustee Ivan, the safety committee wants to know if you made any progress with the bus shelter on Lawndale. Uh, no, I haven't had time to uh, set up the meeting yet, but uh, I will make an effort, a better effort this month to, uh, to okay. accomplish that. We just got a check from them for our share of this uh, advertising. Was it the five or six grand again? Or? It was not. What was it? $3,400. Ah, so revenue has gone down. So uh, what's the issue with the bus shelter? Uh, to relocate it. It's way too close to the border. Right. You're trying to get out on the you can't see west. Mm. Oh, gotcha. <coughs> I would like to either move it to First Midwest if that was okay with pace, but like you said, Mayor, the pace's traffic counts just came up and who knows what they're going to readjust. So, um, But the big thing is it's a hazard. Uh, the Safety Committee had a meeting uh, yesterday and Four things I want to bring the attention of the board. We talked about disabled parking. They're just as confused as the board was about what to do, so they wanted to try to reach out to other towns and see if they have the same issue and maybe get some guidance on how it's handled for other towns. Um, also, for the... Um, Are you talking about for um, private residents to make... Yes. A dis put a disabled parking... Well, it's either a home? disabled or permit parking. You know, you can't really have disabled parking, handicapped parking on that street because it's side by side. So it's going to be a space, it's going to basically be, be giving them a space where they can park. So it could be permit parking, which would be designated with a number that they could have, and this would be the only number they could park there. Mm -hmm. Now, do other towns do that uh, for disabled people? How do they handle it? What are the charges? What are the criteria, you know, so on and so forth, you know, that, that's, a, that's a lot of stuff. I mean, I don't know how you figure that out, but we're looking for ways of figuring that out. The other thing that we want, we're still working on, is that uh, we haven't gotten any response from Bremen as far as if they're going to have any additional parking lots at Bremen High School uh, to uh, help supp supplement the ones that are there and uh, make up for the one that was taken over by the uh, new addition. And um, so we've sent letters, a couple of letters, and now we're going to send letters to the uh, assistant principal, see if they can give us some guidance. We don't, from what we, from what we hear, there isn't going to be any additional parking lots, and we're going to have to deal with this uh, the way we we have to. Uh, another thing that was uh, brought to our attention is so the what's, what's the concern with that? Uh, students are parking all over the place because and, of the construction uh, over yeah. there. A lot of the spots have been. Fenced off, so now they're, right. they're getting deeper and deeper into the neighborhood. Right. The students. So then they're getting tickets. They're not getting tickets because they're allowed to park there. They're, they're allowed to park trash. There's, there's no, there. there's no restriction. No, it's permit parking. What no, I don't that Area we're talking about is not restricted. Right. right, Ridgeway all the way in Lawndale. So just outside. Oh, the you're talking about yeah. down yeah. there. Right, where the sort of where the curves yeah. is where it starts. And the yeah. other thing that was brought to our attention is there's trucks parked on where the curves are, and that's not exactly the most wonderful thing because the visibility and the width there is sort of touchy anyway. So maybe we want to talk about when are they no parking there? on the curb. Pardon me. When are they parked there? Uh, during the day, during kids, the day. Are, kids are parking there. That's the problem. But there's trucks there, you too. Mean construction trucks. Yes. Oh. Well, I don't know if they're construction trucks. So we're going to do more homework on that. We have to do a lot more observations. You're about talking that. about this curve right here. Yep. Okay. That's right. So, you know, the theory would be to make a permit parking for uh, Ridgeway, where it's not, and uh, Lawndale. Mm -hmm. So, but if we don't have to do that, because Bremen's going to put up another lot, then we wouldn't have to do that. But we have. But how long is your construction going to take? Well, that's not just con it's not just construction. It's you know the the, oh, took the addition away took away though some of the parking. Okay. So <coughs> in fact, the Forest Preserve is taken to uh, closing the gate on the uh, north side yeah, north entrance because they don't want uh, students parking there. Mm -hmm. So. You know, we have to get a resolution about what's Bremen going to do and then for us to decide what we want to do. But we wouldn't want to make a move until we're sure what Bremen is going to do or not do, not just on hearsay. Is the school required to keep so much green space in front? Because they have a pretty big front yard. 
No. Okay, so they can conceivably turn some of their front lawn into some parking, right? They can, but they also have uh, the uh, water retention there, too. Not on both sides. No, no, side. not, no, no, just on one side. Yeah, just on, on the, the one side. Yeah, which on the south side. The, yeah, the on south the side, they have a lot of space. Too. Yeah, so they've got plenty of room. Okay. Okay, uh, we're going to, you know, if we do talk to them, we're going to tell them that it's get, that the parking's going to be a problem, and do they have any other ideas for, mm -hmm. or any contemplating <coughs> the additional parking on their uh, property. Um, but I can tell you, like at Oak Forest, it changed the same way Oak Forest hasn't added any additional parking at all. They're not going to get any additional parking. I don't think so. Less. Yeah, I don't I'm think so. I'm assuming they will get less permits because... The kids have to buy those they permits do, yeah. to park. I, yeah. They, they can't they get the same amount of park parking permits if they don't And then their property. Right. But as far as, yeah, okay. Let's find out what they're doing, and then we'll know what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Uh, we talked about the bus stop. Uh, as far as uh, the mayor suggesting to make Hamlin a no left turn, yes, there is a problem. And Waverly, no left turn on certain hours in the morning and the evening, and yes, there is a problem. We've done surveys. And uh, Hamlin is, a, is trouble and Waverly is trouble, uh, both a and p.m. <coughs> but the uh, safety committee is concerned that if we make a restriction there that the traffic will go to another street to make a left turn, mainly uh, Lawndale um, on the one side and Avers on the other, which is going to be, uh, Lawndale is always a, already concerned that um, you know, we, there's a safety hazard because of the bus stop. Um, and so <coughs> we, the safety committees would suggest that we restrict the left turn also on Lawndale and Avers uh, during certain hours. Um, Are we talking from 147? Yes. Left hand turn on to 147. Yes. Waverly left. If you're on the left. south side of 147th Street right, and you're yeah. turning left to go right. west, yeah. yeah. So you want to restrict it on Hamlin? You have a map right Yeah, there. Hamlin, <laughs> Lawndale, and Avers. No, yeah. Central Park. Where's Avers? <coughs> Avers is here. Oh, so in okay. other words, there, people, yeah, you can't, people you can't would be turned. Right. You can't turn left to go east. Okay. Right. So Correct. that would be our suggestion that Avers actually would only be restricted in the And, uh, and in also the on evening. Springfield. And no, no, blue. because they, we think that Springfield is acceptable. To but, turn they, left? but here, Springfield during the school hours, uh, morning and the afternoon is one way going north. So, okay. you know, it's only going to be it's only going to be right, certain but, hours. But my point is, Hamlin <coughs> and Acres are just as close to the railroad tracks. I mean, right. Springfield is as close to the railroad tracks as yes, Central Lawndale. Park. Lawndale. And Lawndale is over here. We're so just doing Lawndale. I know, but I'm thinking you're going to so do. So where are people? If you're going to do Hamlin. There's nowhere to. Okay. And Lawndale. Hold on. Right. If you're going to do Hamlin and Lawndale. Right. From the south, coming from the south, driving north, and then right. you're going to restrict the left-hand turn to go west. Yep. Then you should also do the same restrictions on Avers and Springfield, making a left-hand turn to go you're east. Right. You're right. I would agree with you, but then there is no way people can make a left-hand turn. Because there's, this street is the car dealer. I'm not talking is, about this one. I'm, I'm not talking about Harding. I'm talking about Springfield, right? Harding, right. Harding isn't available. I'm not. Ta I'm not talking about Harding. Well, how do people make a left hand Springfield turn? Springfield doesn't know. Oh. Right. right. Springfield so when, goes. When, yes, from Springfield. The south? No, I'm talking about when you're drop. When you're. Springfield goes to 140. You guys. Yes. Avers and Springfield. Are, are the same issue. Aver, I, we're talking about the north side of 147th Street. Okay. Right. If we're going to restrict the people on Avers for making a left-hand turn we're to not. go east, that's what he was Waverly. talking about. Waverly and Avers. Waverly and Avers. What I'm saying is you should also restrict Springfield. Well, okay. what you got to remember, too, is that the school has directionals that only cars can go this would be, ways. But this would be after school. School is done by 3, 3.30. We're talking about from 4 to 6 because of rush hour and, tra and the rush hour traffic. traffic. But if you're over in this section on the uh, on the north section, how do you make a left turn on the 147th at all? Where? For here, where, if you're here, how do you make a left turn on the 147th if you're going to if you're going to eliminate Springfield? Here, you can go to the next. You can go to uh, Clifton. 
Uh, well, if they're on Springfield, they can come over to Pulaski. They can come out on to then Pulaski. Then they have to make a left turn on Pulaski. Yeah, turn on Pulaski. Yeah. Why don't I just go to Cicero mm -hmm. and then there come you back go. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's what, what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous idea. Yeah. yeah. There's so all I mean, these two streets to turn on over there. They need a street to turn on. I think and they would be Wigley's Springfield. Wigley's a problem because it's, it's, yeah, it's right there. Yep. Yep. away from it's the correct. tracks. Yep. The tracks right there, you can yep. see. Yep. Correct. And people get yep. tired and, and, and can't see and they go. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was my problem. I don't think Avers and Springfield. Well, I would think if, they, if you restrict that on Waverly, that they would go to Avers. I'll tell you, Mayor, Avers, Avers is difficult. Avers is very difficult because, and I, I've, I've traveled there for 28 years. It's very difficult when you're on Avers to even make a right-hand turn in the evening with all the traffic coming because the building, the Christ Brothers building is so close to the street that it's very hard to see around, especially if there are cars parked in the parkway on an angle on the west side of that Christ Brothers building. It's hard to see around for traffic coming. So, it, and Avers just seems like it's just such a narrow little street because there's parking on both sides, right at the corner on the um, parkway. I'll just, I'll just go to Pulaski and get to 57. Uh, so Let's go to the so we're talking about people <coughs> coming out from the parking, the metro parking lot onto Waverly and not being able to make a left-hand turn on 247th Street. Right. Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell the people that are the 180 spaces, whatever spaces there are, turn right into our residential neighborhoods. They do. They already do. You can go to McDonald's and get on Pulaski. They already do. That's what, they, that's what most of those cars in that parking lot do. They do go, they? Yeah. They go to Springfield and then... Right. Get off, uh, and then I think we have to leave Springfield north. open because otherwise they have to go to Pulaski and make a left. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, and, and the hours we're talking. The hours we're talking about here. Avers would only be again in the evening, um, mm -hmm. because a lot of it is going to be. You know, you can't. Uh, it's one way during the morning for the school, so you can't fool with that. We're talking about 6:30 to 9 a.m. in the morning and 4 to 6:30 p.m. in the evening. Could you repeat that? You're going to send it all to us too, right? I mean, You'll send it all to us too? Yes. Uh, 6.30 to 9 a.m. Yes, absolutely. 6.30 to 9 a.m. in the morning, 4 to 6.30 p.m. in the evening. Um, also, we want to have a no left turn sign not only at the street, but we want to have it a block north or south, as the case may be, so people can find, can look at it before they get there, that there's no left turn. We don't want, you know, if they want to, if they want to mm -hmm. make a turn, like you're talking about, Mayor, that they would know that there's a block, a block, a block ahead that can make the turn. Yeah. So I'll send that to you, and then I suspect there'll be questions. So that's fine. So again, just to recap, we're talking about no left turn off of here. Off of Hamlin right. and Lawndale right. and Avers and Waverly. <coughs> okay, just those four streets. Okay. Uh, while we're looking at our newsletter, I do have one other, a couple other things. Uh, I think I, I would uh, like to uh, ask if we could give uh, the young man who collected 6,000 pounds of uh, food to donate to different uh, shelters and churches, uh, Dylan Glusick. I wonder if we could uh, give him a, uh, present him with a uh, certificate of meritorious works. service or something like that. There's and already something in the works. Never mind. But great idea. it's yes. a good idea. Great idea. Okay. Uh, last uh, second before the uh, newsletter, did anybody get a chance to look at the Surgeon General report on vaping? Did you send it to Yes. Yes, you did. Yes. And I looked at it. Yes. I got it, but I need to turn down the whole thing. Did I forget you? I don't. Uh, hopefully, I didn't. Otherwise, you should be hit with a. Did everybody else get it? Did I miss anybody else? I got it. I, I counted. Sent it. Counted. You sent it to all of us. I think I counted it. Okay, so if I'll send it to Sandy again, and maybe in the future we can discuss it again. Uh, see if there was anything that stood out or any action that we wanted to take or so on and so forth. And so your recommendation is that we restrict the sale of that product 
the same way we restrict the sale of cigarettes. No, I would want to raise the age of 21. Hmm? If I was doing it, I would raise the age of 21, but that is, wouldn't be... Isn't, isn't that what our age limit is for selling of cigarettes? 18. 18. 18. Oh, it's 18? Yeah. Or 16. I'm kidding. <laughs> or 14, right? <laughs> whatever you want. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I mean, if you looked at the figures in that report... The 20 well, because right now there's no age restriction on selling that product at all to anybody, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 18. Is it 18? 18, 18 yeah. Oh. But if you looked at it, 20% of the... High school students under 18 are already vaping. So, and since that, and since that product is super addictive, yes, uh, it could present a problem in the future. Let's go. Worse way. than cigarettes. Uh, one one one, car one cartridge of Juul is a whole pack of cigarettes. But you're and you to you smoke a whole cartridge in one yeah, one shot. Supposed to take a it's supposed days. to be a little bit of a time. Yeah. Okay. You're supposed but, to do that last yeah. a couple of days. Yeah, but I don't know what happens. Yeah, oh, and it's expensive. Pardon me? Not as expensive as cigarettes. It's cheaper than cigarettes. Oh, that's true. They are, and it's been made, it's made to, to go to a younger demographic. Jewel, interestingly, Jewel itself <coughs> and their company tries to recommend to the uh, retailers that they don't sell their product to anybody under 21. So they're already promoting that. It's already it's already there. So I'll, we so can just any vape, any, any vape, type of vape product, any, vape product. any type of e-cigarette vape. Yes. Twenty one. I mean twenty one. Yes. So then that means even the vape shops could not. All their customers have to be twenty one and over. They sell other products besides hookahs, and they sell other other things that are. That are there. Yeah, but is but, it a hookah a vape product? No. Don't you vape off of a hookah? No, you just sit no? steam or something, isn't it? Uh, I, I don't know. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> it's a water pipe. All right. It's a water, okay, yes. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, there's vapor there. <laughs> so, that's for future discussion, and uh, I'm sorry if I didn't get it to. No, that's okay. Um, do we have a finish look at the same yes, token? I, I did get a plethora of information from Mr. Decker about legalizing recreational cannabis. Uh, it, it's it's just it's too much to send. I, I don't think it, there's a lot. Of, I mean, there's like 20 links, and I don't know how I'm going to package this. If you guys are even interested, I don't know. But just and, it, and it's all, of course, pro legalization. You know, I don't. I didn't see anything that was anti. So I don't know. No, it's not anything anti. The, uh, the it does that does look like the uh, from the, the links that I've read um, that he supplied uh, it does sound like the uh, Springfield is going to be doing something here very soon in legalizing uh, marijuana. But it's going to give each municipality the option, just like they did with the gaming, the option to opt in or out, or, or we had to opt into gaming. Do we have to? We had to vote to allow it. Yes. Yeah. It it's going to be the same thing, I believe. I haven't seen any right. bills yet, but it's probably going to be the same. So we'll have, we will have to cross that bridge. Okay. Well. Last, so that's another, another another discussion, but we need to educate ourselves on that, too, because other, pretty much every town around us probably will have that. Um, last but not least, did you see any differences in the uh, newsletters that you want to talk about? Well, I could see that the format was different. The format that our newsletter was set up was every page had two columns, mm -hmm. and, and this one did. This one was a little bit more paragraph form. Yes. Um, they did have a catchphrase throughout. Did you know? Did you know? With a little box of information. So that was that's something that was kind of interesting that right. you know catch someone's eye. Right. I think that um, when. When I was trying to draft the information for the building department, rather than writing in paragraphs because I knew we were going to have a short amount of space, I was trying to do it more bullet points mm -hmm. so they'd be a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's an idea for when we draft the next version, you know, if we use that type of drafting format. I don't know. Anybody else? There was a lot of photos. There was they had a lot, to it, they had a lot, lot more photos. photos in it. But that is, that's a six month, that's summer and fall. <laughs> right, that's a big one. Yeah, right. so they do it twice a year, I believe. Mm -hmm. okay. And was it more pages than ours also? Yeah. Okay. And we completely missed it. 
the, the whole village board. The, the inside page of theirs, the, the, the village board, we didn't have that. Yeah. Right. I, I'm fine if my photo is not in there. <laughs> I am too. I think content yeah, is more important. I didn't even notice it. I think content is more important. Yeah. I mean, just put the list. The names, the names is fine, but okay. yeah, we don't, I don't. I don't need my photo. Okay. Anything else that you, you know, anybody else? So I guess what's our plan for the newsletter? Because I know we talked about for it the next bit. one at yeah. finance uh, about you know newsletters. What's the plan? Oh, but, but, but just Sorry. Let me start. On, let me keep on this, and then Sorry. we'll go to another. But I mean, anybody content format? I mean, we can change the format. We don't have to leave it in column form. Well, I well sure okay. if that's so, what you, so if you what, wanted. So what happened here, up, so. I think, was from what I see between the two, the also thing is much more readable because it doesn't have long articles. We right. have to break up those long articles. Right. We can't have things that people try to read a whole page that don't right. read it. If and it's more than two paragraphs, they're not going to read that's it. That's right. And, you know, I mean. We, we can also, I mean, with computers the way they are on the internet and everything else, we can also give people links to our yes. website if we yes. want to put yes. full articles on there. If someone's interested in something, read the full article at the website. Right. Exactly. Right. You can go and we'll put mm -hmm. the full article there right. and just yeah. give us a summary right. of it. Right. So right. That it's not so we, wordy. We need to have a spot where we have more global village information. Like we kind of missed the boat on um, <coughs> uh, Code Red. We didn't, there was no mention of code red there, and we could have put it, code red there. We had, um, we, I think we did have something in the police department, but it was. On code red? Okay. Yeah, so we could put like code red there. Okay. Um, Just quickly, we're, yeah. we're trying to shy away from right. putting long things on right. the village website right. because of the limitations, so we're actually trying to go more linkish. Right. 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 But but with regards to Code Red, the problem with Code Red is we're having difficulty getting to every single resident because we got back to the other conversation about you saying put a, something small in the newsletter, but then put the full article on the website mm -hmm. or a link. Oh, no, 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 or a link to it. Sorry. Yeah, as long as it's somewhere other than our right. website. Right. The newsletter is going to have a link to the link to the link. Right. Well, I mean, right. what, otherwise we have long articles for people. I mean, yeah. I agree. Yeah, right. No, but I mean, right. Mm -hmm. so, so on both of them. So you know, we need shorter articles. We need them more readable. Um, Sharon actually, she cut some stuff out, but she said she still had way too much content. She had to cram it in, and uh, that's not going to be readable. You know, we had a contest to name the newsletter. So how many responses did we get? I don't know. How many? Anybody, somebody want to give me a number? Ten. Zero. In between, seven. If wow. we got seven, seven, seven responses, that doesn't. That means that newsletter wasn't read that much. No, because how many went out? Fifty-five hundred. But I mean, we can't Never just. one at our house, and neither did my neighbors. I didn't get one. Yeah, so we need to talk to the post office because we if we've got people not getting that. I would have put a submission in for a name, but I didn't get one. <laughs> What, but one of the things I think we also need to do is we need to not rely on one source of information. For this. We, you know, if we really wanted to, to, to partake, partake in that, we should have put it in the messenger. We should have asked the churches to do it. We should have sent it to the schools. You know, asked. We, we, we should do more than just one form of information so that, mm -hmm. you know, post it on Facebook. Yes, Use absolutely. All the different absolutely. We have I'm just in charge of newsletter. Somebody else is in charge of, of doing the rest of it. But that's absolutely <laughs> multimedia is definitely the way to go, without a doubt. But um, we have such a small segment of our population that rely on multimedia. How many people don't have computers <laughs> right. or I, don't? I don't know about that. But I mean, if we do, I would say small. The messenger. If we put it on our website, if we put it on Facebook, if we again send it to the churches and the schools, <laughs> you know. Right. Right, we can do some of that, definitely. But again, I think the articles have to be more about telling a story, making more readable. They, they're but too we're, not edit we're not writers and editors. I mean, that's the problem that we have when you hit when you want, you know, you want, and, and the only chief, the only two chiefs here. I mean, you know, they're used to writing reports and things like that. Mm -hmm. Not that you're not eloquent and don't do a great job. I'm not saying that, but I enjoy it. But myself. he's not a reporter, you know. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> If you, mean, to do achieve, so. if you want to do it to achieve, that's what we did. Right. You know, what, I mean, we, what else do you? I, I'm sure also paid a lot of money for that. So, what do you want to well, do? I, 
you know, I, I think I would like to serve as sort of, originally my idea was to get the students from Bremen to serve as reporters. I think we need reporters to sit there and interview people and write down what their thoughts Great. are. And I would, We could give them ideas and then they come and talk to us about what uh, they think. That's, well, that's right. I, th I still love to get Bremen to do that, but I got to work harder on that. But in the meantime, if you feel like you shouldn't be writing this stuff. The problem you're going to have with Bremen is the same problem we have Bremen is awesome, and we and I, I can speak. Yeah. I think for Kathy and myself, we have worked with them yeah. for the police department, the building, for all of us. Yeah. They've been fantastic, but every year they have turnover. Right. So the people who are going to be doing reporting and in that skill set are going to be juniors or seniors, and, we're and then they're going to leave. Right. Yeah. So you know, every we, year it's going to change. It's going to change. We're right. going to get something different. So we either have to. I mean, I think a newsletter is, is is important. I think telling a story is important. I think getting it out to people is important. Very important, but if we want professional grade <coughs> stories, then we need professionals to do it because we're, we're, I'm not. I mean, I, I can speak for myself. I mean, is, 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 but I am is Sharon good at editing? Is she a good editor? I mean, if we all wrote our own stories, if every department or whoever wrote mm -hmm. their own stories, can we give it to Sharon and work with her and have her help us edit it? No. Well, I don't think no? I mean, okay. I'm sure she's good at editing. She, she's she's, she's great, great at everything. everything. She's but, an administration well, again, employee. Well, again, Katie will read them, but I have to tell you, she said the articles were pretty bad. And she did a lot of editing. Well, okay, but then, but who, sh nobody shared that editing with anybody. Wait, I shared the, uh, the Don, I shared. Well, here's, the, here's what's going to happen this time. We're going to do the format of the articles and we're going to put them in some sort of format and then we're going to give that to the editor so that when it comes back, it will come back in the format of the newsletter so you can look at what happened. Last time it was like individual articles. I mean, article. I'm all for constructive criticism, but someone's got to share the information with us. I don't want constructive criticism because I'm not a writer. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a writer. Um, and for and us, and, 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 I'm, and putting it on Nick or Dan or, or Steve to become... No, 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 and she, did, she, she cleaned up a lot of this stuff, I, and I hopefully right. it all because got bad. Because we were told at this meeting, don't worry about editing, right. we're going to have someone right. edit it. Right. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when we were proofing things, we didn't worry about a period, or was it a period or a comma should oh. have used a semi and we had some, and we had So that we didn't done. worry about that, but, uh, but again, we're not writers. Right. Right. And even still after that... Sandy and I looked at it twice and made a few more nitty fixes. Right. Yeah, we could Maria, Maria and I looked at it. I mean, and then there were some some mistakes that I missed that Maria caught. And this right. is, you know, after you read the thing five times, right. yeah, it all becomes a blur. Yeah, yeah it exactly. does. Well, I'm going to so. take I'm going to take the role of uh, junior editor or whatever. I'm junior gonna, editor. <laughs> and I'm going to see what I see what I can do with it. I'm going to write it a little differently and I if 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 uh, like uh, you want to if you want me to interview somebody and I can take down notes and put it in some sort of format I'm more I'm all for that now over the long term I don't want to do that I'll be dead but, but the bottom line is <laughs> so, so why don't we talk to somebody about getting a professional to come in and contract and to do it we did we had we had fanning Fanning, it's very fanning, expensive. Fanning is well, they were going to put the whole. They were going to like. They were going to put the whole everything. thing together. Yes. They were, that was everything. Well, they don't print it. They they contract <clears throat> it enough. Like a newspaper. Whoever, whoever, right. yeah, whoever they. But did. Fan, fanning is three thousand dollars a month to do that. But just for just we for. We don't want it every month, right? Three thousand dollars a quarter. It's three thousand dollars just for them to write it. Plus, then we're paying. Uh, twenty twenty five hundred dollars or something. So but are they the only one out there that does that? Can't we contact some of these freelance writers that write for the South? We can have we can have Kate Kate will punch it up. She will. What is that? And she'll do it for free. Punch it up? Maybe. She'll make it so it's more appealing and that it's grammatically correct. Let's try. Let's try that for this time and see how. But she did. She did, and I kept giving you the okay. articles. <clears throat> okay. So let me see if I can do some sort of general format that is shorter to the point, and and if people aren't comfortable writing it, I'll start out writing it, and then we have our doctor, doctor of English, to punch it up. I just I just texted my buddy Mayor Ryan from also to give me information on how they put theirs together. Great. I can get the phone. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Uh, who does the who does the library's newsletter? Do they edit it themselves? Do they write it themselves and they only have the I would bet she it? does because Jen, Jen is a, Jennifer's an English teacher. Yeah. That was her background. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, Jennifer, she she but is an English they have teacher. somebody on staff that does their newsletter. Uh, Ruth, I think. Yeah. Becker. Oh, oh, God. But, but Jen, God. the library director is, I heard it was her prior time. life was is an English teacher. Okay. So she knows how to do this stuff. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Let's try it again, and then your next question was? Okay, the key then know. is to when? share the information. Yes. You have to, it has to be shared with everybody. Right. So when? We're going to do four, three, what? I would like to like I would like to have another one go on at the end of March. So March into June into September into December. Well, I, I'm not saying I'm not projecting into the whole rest of the year. Fine. I'm just saying the next one I'd like to see go at the end of March. So for the end of March, we want to do a newsletter, the budget. Um, <laughs> what else did we have? You don't need to thing? sleep. Zoning. There's zoning. zoning. Uh huh. I mean. Uh, your ordinances too. Don't we have to pass those? Plumbing ordinances. Plumbing ordinances. <laughs> I'm just saying, we, we are we are we are at well, January 17th. That's where the edits will go. The plumbing ordinance. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. again, well, if we you know by March first. We just 1st, have a lot can, of stuff coming up yeah. that if, if you could give me the information by March first. Get one out by March one. I mean by March 31st. <laughs> Sorry, I right. mean March 31st. Right. And then we, we, I've, reached, I've reached out to. Uh, or let's say the first week in April. The library, the library, and the and park district for what they want to put on there. Hopefully, we won't miss a deadline this time. And I'm going to also reach out to the schools if there's other events they want to put in there just to get their foot in the door. Get them a better picture of what's happening with Lothian. Any other questions? That's it. No, we were at the uh, school board meeting last night, uh, Trustee Gabby Crowley and myself. And uh, I was talking to one guy about the, the new facilities. And it's going to be more than just sports. It, it is going to be more uh, multimedia uses, too. So uh, I think they're going to try to expand on, on all this multimedia Technical stuff. learning, yeah, so. multimedia learning. Okay. Hopefully it all comes through. But that, of course, that's down the road. But that's it. Uh, Thank you, sir. Just a couple things tonight. Um, first, I have sent everybody um, an email regarding uh, extending an offer of employment to a full-time police candidate. I wanted to bring it up for discussion there, and see if anybody had any questions or concerns. I sent you an email. No concerns. How, what is our point? staffing? How many are? I'm going to ask the chief. How many are you? How many full-time officers are you down? One resigning in the month. Oh, we have somebody else resigning? Yes. <laughs> I didn't ask. <laughs> I want to say, say we're still down two after this time, but I got Two, but I think it's three. I think it might be three. <sighs> so, after this the door. Yes. Um, nobody has any questions, mm -hmm. then I'd like to have it on the agenda for next week for approval. Um, next, I'd like to open discussion to extend the offer of employment to our animal care and control officer. I did send an email about that last night. Um, I know that it was not in time technically for discussion today, so I will carry it over for discussion tomorrow if anybody thinks we need to carry that over. I think I explained it, but I, I know it wasn't uh, done by Monday evening, so I, I just wanted to get that out there because Chief Delaney and I finally had an opportunity to talk about it a little bit on Monday. And that is part-time, correct? It is part-time. That is correct. When you redacted the name on the application, you kind of missed. <laughs> well, sir, it was, I think, 10 o'clock last night, and I had been at a finance committee meeting, at a school board meeting, and then I went home and did this. So I was a little sleepy. Sorry. I apologize. I tried very hard. And I did it technically, so. I didn't print it and use the black marker. I used the tools that I learned. <laughs> I have no issue with um, your request to extend the offer. Then if no one has any questions, I'd be asked to be on the agenda next week for approval. I also sent out an email. Um, I do have a little bit of an update, so the next two are probably just one. Um, we do have a budgeted position. It's a 
a little over $300 per person to send two officers to the taser training class in February. Um, our, when, our, when Deputy Chief Delaney looked into it, there are only two classes <coughs> this year, so we're trying to get both officers and in February. Um, the next one is to approve a manual check. I do not need that on the agenda because we can use our credit card, so we found that out. So this is a budgeted item, so I want to open it up if anybody has any questions for going ahead and sending sending our officers to the to, to the training. I have no objection to it. I, I'm just curious, do all of our officers have taser training? Yes. Not all at the same time. This is instructor training. Sorry. <laughs> so this is going to be taser instructor training. So our two officers will be certified. Oh, train okay. the trainer. Train gotcha. the trainer. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Which yeah. we did, um, it was nice too today, just on a side note, we were, we did have um, our cadets did get to speak to someone from the Secret Service today. Um, Chief Delaney um, is having uh, speakers come in through, for the next couple months to talk to them about fields and law enforcement. Last week was the FBI. This week was the Secret Service. Um, so it's very, being very well accepted. Actually, we heard on the way out, Deputy Chief Rafferty told us that two people actually um, got the information from the person from the Secret Service today because they offer an internship when you go to be a freshman in college and they can apply for it. So it's really a great program for, again, seven girls and seven boys mm -hmm. in the cadet program going forward. Um, mm -hmm. It's very impressive. Nice. Uh, they're getting opportunities because of our program that they probably would not even have known of mm -hmm. until later in life. So I was very impressed with that. Secret Services, when did I miss it? Today. <laughs> next is, what's next? DA. DA. I think DA is next. Um, so that was it about the training. Discussion on the micro pantry. So I had the pleasure of meeting the young man who um, raised over 6,000 pounds of food for our village. He is a sophomore at Lemon High School. Um, Jean Bartecki and Sandy Cortez came in um, and we had a brief meeting last Thursday to discuss his ideas for um, a micro pantry. One has already gone up at Bremen. I sent everybody the link and what it looks like. Um, I would like to put it on the agenda next week. Is that good? Yeah. You, oh, they, uh, would that be enough time for you? Uh, it should be. Let me, uh, I gotta make a call over to um, uh, Stella to make sure they can okay. bring it in the week, but they just did a couple of points. Okay. Um, so, uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions about the micro pantry, and then I'll discuss what we are just talking about. Um, where are we proposing to put it? Um, what the proposal is that I talked to um, Trustee Ivan, since we are pouring a concrete slab already for the drop box, mm -hmm. we thought that would be a perfect spot if we could just extend that little concrete mm -hmm. a little bit and put the box right next to it. Um, there's, you know, we don't really want it under lock and key, but we do want it somewhere from what Dylan and the ladies explained <coughs> to me, where it can be monitored and you can make sure people aren't leaving things outside and make sure that, you know, it's filled, you know, regularly so that people who are in need can take advantage of it. It's a fantastic program. I went on, I, I went on their Facebook page, I went on their website. The story is really pretty amazing and I, I'm just so impressed with this young man who also happens to be a police cadet um, and told us how interested he is in following his law enforcement career. So impressed. I, we actually talked about it at our school meeting yesterday and <clears throat> all of the people from Bremen knew who he was without us even saying his name. So he is, you know, he is definitely, uh, you know, up and coming in our community. 
So when you said monitor, that means that you can keep track of people putting things there. And no, no, monitor it so it's 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 clean. It's it's right. you know sometimes people drop things off and if it's full they might leave it on the side. You know we just don't want it to look like junky or anything mm -hmm. like that. So Chief Delaney has there's there's a number of people who've offered to help. Um, Jean Bartecki, Sandy Cortez. Um, they're involved in this project too. Um, I know Dylan also has some people who are, are going to be donating some some supplies and things like that. But we thought it'd be good too. We talked. I talked to Chief Delaney. They'll keep an eye on it to make sure you know they're going back and forth every day. So if they need to pull something inside because there's not enough room or something like that, and <clears throat> we will also be making uh, a donation. Is it cameras cover that? I don't. So you said put it next to the. Uh... I don't think it's the Dropbox. Yeah. Not at the library. It's not going to go next to the little ramp. No, ramp. It's going to go by next the ramp. to the ramp. The new Dropbox. Eat a parking spot. Uh, <laughs> is it really? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. 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 No, it's a little. It's kidding. a little further over. It's before your parking spot. Yeah. <laughs> the camera covers just that parking spot. And yeah, yeah, I didn't think it did anything. Well, so, which is good. We don't really want it. No, we don't really want it to cover it. Right. You don't want to show her. Yes. And um, Dylan did check with the, so what's cool about this is the, I sent you guys a picture of it, the um, box that's made is weather resistant, so it really doesn't matter if it's in the, in the weather, but we thought if we made a little bit bigger of a um, pad there to put it on, it would just, you know, keep it, you know, from sitting in the dirt and things like that. Dylan said he's going to add solar lights to it? Or? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I guess I, who who goes through it to check expiration dates and stuff? Well, I think Dylan kind of in Dylan's mind that the stuff should probably go over regularly, but we'll go through it to make sure that it's we're all there's fine. a bunch of people spawned. Like like I said, Jean and Sandy, the police department. There's the woman from um, one of the businesses in town also wants to. So I think you know we'll, we'll make sure we get it done once a month at least. And it's not that big that it's going to have that much stuff, but it's big enough. No questions? Very cool. No problems? Concerns or answers? If not, then can we have it on the agenda for approval next week? Mm -hmm. um, in connection with that, what I started to say to you when you were talking about that, the police department has already um, put together a um, award that they would like to present to Dylan at the same time that um, we approve this next week, mm -hmm. so that's why I was communicating with Chief Delaney. They already have a, something in mind, so I hope we're gonna, they're going to reach out to his parents, make sure they're here and stuff like that. Because I asked Dylan if he could be here when we talked about it, approved it at the board in case there were any questions. Hopefully, he's not watching tonight. Otherwise, he'll the the, the, the can't sound the band. Otherwise, the uh, surprise is yeah. up. But we will be giving him an award as well for his hard work. So we do one from the village as well, or just we think that would be. I think the village, village is a award from the village, not just specifically. Okay. Okay. You're the best. Um, what else did I have? As I started to say, talk about, we had our um, second annual school meeting with the mayor, the police department, myself, and all of the schools. Um, yesterday was our second one. It was um, very successful. Chief Delaney was able to discuss with all the schools the new law that went into, per, went into place January 1st regarding uh, mandatory, rapid re re mandatory rapid response training um, that even the grammar schools will now have to partake in. Um, and that will have to be done within 90 days of school beginning every year. Um, so that was a great discussion. We also had our engineer there who um, came up with a plan because we did not have enough time um, for the grant that we wanted this year because we needed, we needed letters of support from parents as well. So all of that was given out to the princi principals and to the superintendents and, at, and they will be coming up with a priority list that I'm going to be sharing with the board of some of their concerns regarding safety um, to and from schools and things like that. So it was a really good meeting. It was very successful. Um, the police department is working with the superintendent as well as the grammar school 
principals to come up with programs that we can start offering to encourage younger children to get involved. We, some of the ideas were having some of the cadets that are currently in our program going to the grammar schools, talking about the program, you know, so that going forward they'll be looking forward to some of these programs if not having their own. And then we learned, I learned a couple things. Um, one thing I learned that I did not know is that every Wednesday Central Park um, has uh, a reading program where seniors or residents or whoever has time can go and read to children. Um, you know, they can help them with math, they can help them with reading, um, which I just, I didn't know about it and I think it's a, a great idea. Obviously you have to go through a background check and you have to apply and all that stuff, but even if it's a, an hour a month, you can go and volunteer to read or, you know, help children that need help with math and things like that. So um, we're going to think of some ways that we can incorporate some things that we'd like to do with that, um, you know, going forward. So I will keep you guys posted, but I thought that was great information. Um, I know we're trying to get, you know, get people want to do things and people have ideas, and I just think, you know, especially for people who are looking for some volunteer work to do, it's a great opportunity and, you know, it, it you know, something that I didn't know and I wanted to share. Dave, I was going to talk about IT stuff, but I think we've had enough for one night, so I will add that for next time. Mm -hmm. Can we discuss it a little bit? Perfect. What do we need to discuss? Which one, what, which one did we need to discuss? Um, the because I had a list of seven. Pro <laughs> proven data analysis of our servers oh. and uh, showed the uh, our capacity. We are all exceeding capacity mm -hmm. of our current servers with the uh, new software and the more and more stuff that we push out to the cloud. So part of the problem is that our servers are slowing down and lock up. So yesterday when the village was down, we had no internet, no voice. Uh, it was because the server had uh, locked up and wasn't able to uh, give out designated addresses to all the different pieces of equipment that make the village run. So um, we uh, discussed with Proven about coming up with an estimate for a a new server concept for the village to replace the existing four servers that we currently use the most of and uh, there's two others that we do use but uh, they're older than the four servers that we currently use and they're all at the 92 percent plus um, range where typically you want it in the 40 percent or less uh, range of, uh, it, of it working. So. Um, I don't know the uh, cost or anything like that, but we will be at some point in time here soon coming up with a request to fix our server problem. Yes. This will fix all our server problems because all our servers at one point in time, because we've been jiggling things around, trying to do a performance um, across the, the servers to make this sure that they all work uh, for us uh, by getting a faster, stronger, more bigger computer basically would solve our demands on our computers as they uh, are on our servers at this point in time. So what, we, what, what, we, what we've been doing is every month when we have our IT meeting with the department heads, we've been, you know, there's been problems with the print, the print servers going down and then, you know, the, this going, you know, this going down or locking up whatever word you want to, I don't know, the crash. Text. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Um, so that's what, what's been driving a lot of this and you know in hindsight now it makes a lot more sense to me as it was explained that you know when we started 18 months ago we had we didn't have antivirus software that was up to date we didn't have firewalls that were up to date we didn't have licensings that were up to date on top of that so we had to update all of that then we had to add the monitoring software that proven uses then we've added pubworks and all of these other softwares and all of these other things and new computers and we've added all these things and kept the old servers foundation yeah which seems to be a problem so i i, I talked to them today again and we should have something within the next day or so on a proposal um i guess i'll just finish off then with um we've also we are in the final phases of getting things ready for fiber um, the checklist has been gone through. We got an email the other day. Um, 
proven is making sure that everything that the company that's moving fiber, fiber in has their checklist completed. Once that's done, we will be able to move to the new phone system, which will greatly improve a lot of that. So it's well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll jump to 99.6% uh, <coughs> reliability right. from First where step. we are currently, which is like in the 80s or something like that, because it's coax. So can I ask a question? Has any thought been given to outsourcing the uh, server capability? What do you mean by outsourcing? But we already outsource it to a certain extent. So we already Sorry? Use, we already outsource it. Well, I think you mean something different. What do you? What Don't do we you have mean? servers in the uh, the premises? All of our servers are physically on the premise now, except for our backup. Our backup is in the cloud. But how about if you <coughs> contracted with somebody? That is the that is the plan. Okay. What you're saying is a virtual server. Is that what you're implying? Yes, that's exactly that's exactly what I was. Thinking. Uh, that is, that is the proposal we're getting. Yes. For so we will have a physical box. Yes. You're impressed with this, aren't you? No, it's it's totally wrong. <laughs> I'm not totally wrong. Yeah, you're, you're totally wrong. I don't know, what are you talking about? Outsourcing the hardware is what you're talking about, Don? No, we're not, we have no plans to outsource the hardware. Why, Why would we? We need it on site. Why? I mean, what do you mean? Are you talking about rent versus buy? Everybody has, all businesses have their servers on site? No. Why? No, all the big companies use server farms. Well, why? Right. But why do we? Why? Because each time through my whatever years, the servers are the big problem. They've always been the problem, and they're not going to go so away. So this is how it was explained to me, because yes, I think okay. you're asking the same question I did that I had a really hard time with at our IT. we going to yes. talk about IT. See, I said we weren't. Okay, okay. well, she jumped on that rabbit hole. He started. We got, we got to go with it. Sorry. So how it was explained to me is that we will have a box. We will not have five different boxes. Yes. And inside the box will be virtual servers. Yes. And we will be able to cut those virtual servers <coughs> up and assign portions of yes, them yes. to different things. Is that what you mean? No. no. Yes, yes, actually, actually. He means, that's what I mean. That's actually. <coughs> using a server farm to handle all this. Yeah, exactly. The sir, I mean, because we're always going to have, we've always had server problems. We never seem to have enough capacity. We're going to keep on adding more capacity. We're going to keep on adding more capability, which is going to tax our servers more. Why don't we, cont I, it would make sense to me to contract out with someone who doesn't have that problem. They have a big server farm, and no matter what we do, we're, we're fine. Well, I think that, I mean, a portion of... You know, that's a great fantasy idea, but that's not how reality works in, in the IT industry. We don't use a server farm to access those particular services. It has to be on site, because you can't do your name addressing convention uh, with a farm. You need a machine here to say this out, this computer is this address, and right. so on and so on. You need the virus protection software here because we want the virus protection to protect our firewall before it goes outside. If you go to a service farm, you're talking about outside of the business. That wouldn't protect us at all. So the reality is, we need the hardware here, and we need to upgrade the hardware here. Now, by going virtual, that gives the capacity that you're kind of talking about, mm -hmm. which allows us to increase the size of our servers virtually. Yes. So we buy a gigantic machine yes. and we slice it up like pie slices, yes. saying, Dad gets this big slice, Mom gets the slightly smaller slice, yes. and Baby Jesus gets the smallest slice. Okay? And that would be how we would divide up a physical machine instead of four machines into four servers that are, right, like Sandy right, kept right, saying, right. virtualized. Yeah. So what was I wrong about? <laughs> well, I don't want to go into it. Oh, oh. Twice, twice, twice. <laughs> because you probably weren't. <laughs> because I wasn't, right? Exactly. He just doesn't like what I like, but I can regurgitate. I think it is, sir, for now. I'll, I'll hold the rest And so can I just ask a question? <laughs> yes, you may. <laughs> Are the virtual servers, when we start running out of room on the virtual servers, are they more easily You expanded? cannot run out of room out of virtual servers. You can't? No. Okay. They're, they are as big as your physical server is. Yeah, but we've got four physical servers right now that we are running out of room on. So I guess I'm just not grasping this whole virtual. Well, then you're, you missed my metaphor for the pie. 
Well, Sandy gave me the pie metaphor too, and I didn't understand her metaphor. It was the same as your metaphor. So all I'm asking is, by having a virtual server, no. we'll never run out of server room. No, you're still stuck with the physical limits of the device that your virtual server sits on. That's not what you said. Thank well, you. within the physical device, you can have a virtual server, meaning that you can expand it so that one server is bigger than another server. Now, currently, you can't do that because there are four separate physical oh, servers, so you have to put in hardware into the physical servers. The virtual them. one is virtual, meaning that you don't put physical hardware into it because you already have your base. But all of them are overtaxed. If you had this system... No. An individual physical server is overtaxed. I am That's talking about... Said. That's what he just said. Our Four server, our servers are overtaxed. All of them. Ninety-two percent. You just said. Yeah, of physical so servers. We, so how does it, how does that solve the problem? I by adding all four servers together into one big machine and adding more physical hardware together, yes. that creates the ability to create more virtual servers of different sizes within a physical device that is very large. So you would so, buy a big server. <coughs> And have small slices of pie cut so out for me, the virtual right. server. Let me regurgitate it the way I the way it, I took yeah, it. Yeah, right. Okay, because I, I don't I speak like Carl. Right. I don't speak Carl. Right, exactly. <laughs> How I take it is right now, if we have three or four little brown paper bags sitting in a row, we can only fill them so tight. And what happens is once they get full, and there's three or four different things happening within that bag, it can't keep up. Right. So now with the virtual server, we won't have limitations of the little bags inside. We will be able to say, let's take one little ounce and put it as a printer server. And that printer server will always work that fast because it won't have anything else on it. Right. We'll take one little piece. So instead of like one, instead of just four bags that can be filled and filled and filled, it is like your phone. The more you put on it, the more. We will just separate them into virtual servers. How's that? So Sounds like bags of shit, five pound versus a ten pound bag, eh? How's that? Out there How's that? How do you? They have dedicated their lives to this stuff, and I'm going to trust in their opinions. Uh, Good idea. So, yeah, I get it, that the virtual server oh, yeah, would I, be I, able to hold more because it's going to be bigger. It's good. The one big virtual server is going to be bigger than the four we have now. And you're not putting three or four but different we have, things on one we server. We have the capacity of dividing that one server mm -hmm. up into whatever size we need to accommodate okay. each okay. different function. Anything else? That's all I have, sir. Okay. okay. Pretty well, this. Uh, the village was dismissed as a defendant with regard to the driveway lawsuit uh, for the driveway located at 14433 Costner. That's all I have. Uh, Mr. Murphy, Attorney Murphy, will be speaking with the complainant? Uh, actually, he, maybe. he will probably not because while uh, there was some confusion as to what the judge ordered, he was simply stating that the parties, meaning the neighbor, who was also a co-defendant in the lawsuit, and the village should cooperate in trying to assist the uh, the plaintiff, but his order is unequivocal. Uh, the village has been dismissed. The defendant is free to try and figure out a way that uh, the village of Edwaltian somehow has any liability with regard to her neighbor's driveway. I will talk to her. That's all. I have nothing. Uh, just one thing, and this is a follow-up to one of the situations Superintendent Weiner mentioned earlier regarding the variance uh, ordinance for CARS 147, an attorney uh, which had two incorrect pins uh, referenced in the ordinance that the Village Board passed in 2014. Um, attorney Valdez has provided me with an affidavit of Scrivener's error, which will be, um, which corrects the two noted uh, incorrect pins. And my understanding, correct me, attorney, is that this isn't anything that gets sent anywhere other than that it's filed with our official ordinance to note that it was incorrect and this is the correct information. That is Can correct. I state that correctly? That's correct. And the board will, does not need to have another ordinance. It can simply, by oral motion, authorize you to execute the affidavit and to, to attach it to the old ordinance. So I will share a copy of this with the board once I fill in the blanks with the dates 
uh, along with the original ordinance, and I will share that with the board this week. And if there are no issues, I would like to put on the agenda for next week so that we can close this one up. That is all I have. Very good. Seeing as no further business coming for the board, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. The ayes of the chair. Oh. Can I make one comment about your service? <laughs> 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 and did she, did she have her name? Concerned about yeah, the, the server. Are you going to reach a master capacity on that server? Yes, that's exactly. Okay. Well, yeah. well, if you reached that mass yeah. maximum capacity yeah. of server, and respond. Uh, that's, that, that's a big server. Yes, okay. All right. And you can add more yeah, onto a server. You don't have to buy another server. You can add more onto the server. One thing about virtual servers is that if one of your virtual servers fail for some reason, all right, it does not take the whole box down. All, if you had four virtual servers, one failed for some reason, all the three stay That's why it's virtual. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about the whole thing. Got it. So if the print, how close was I with my bags? And the bag? You were close. I was going to use a little closer. <laughs> I still get to the point.